Hi, this is this video is related to resolving of forces and um, one of my students like asked me something related to this and I thought I shall illustrate it with an example of how we can solve this question using resolving of forces. Now of course a vector question can also be solved by vector drawing, like if you recall parallelogram, tip to toe. So but today we shall try resolving of forces. Now as you can see, two strings are supporting a 50 newton weight. So it is suspended. So we know that the system is in equilibrium. So there is no resultant force acting on this uh, weight over here. So the weight is supported by the two strings. Now um, we can't simply say that each of the tension is 25 newton because the strings are obviously at an angle and the weight is vertical. Right? So let's let's recap what exactly is resolving of forces first before we come back to this particular question. Right, so resolving of forces basically means separating the force into convenient directions. Now in math and science, usually the convenient direction is the x and the y direction. So as you can see, if I have a force F that's diagonal, uh, about 30 degree from the horizontal, then if I want to separate or split this force into convenient direction, I would split it into the x direction and the y direction. All right, so which means that I'm going to split it up into the x direction and into the y direction. So how am I actually going to split it? Like, what, what do I actually mean? So I want to write fx in terms of f. Okay, because I know fx is like a part of f, and fy is also a part of f, but how much is that part of it? So we're going to make use of a right angle triangle over here. So the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle is the f that I'm talking about. All right is the force F. And so the this part would be the Fx and this part would be Fy. So using a bit of like trigonometry, we know that cosine 30 degree is equals to Fx divided by F adjacent uh, divided by the hypotenuse. So we have Fx is equals to F cosine 30. Now for the vertical component, we're going to use sine 30 is equals to the opposite, which is Fy, divided by F, which is hypotenuse. So my Y component of F is F sine 30. So there we have it. So the Y component is F sine 30 and the X component of F is F cosine 30. Right, so there we actually split um, the force F into its Y and X component. So the Y and X component can actually literally represent the force F. So how are we going to make use of this for this question? Let's take a look at this. All right. Mm. Now, the tension T is in a certain, like in a particular direction. So we know that this angle over here is 25. Okay, so which means this angle on the left side is also 25. Okay, because it is alternate to the angle uh, between the string and the ceiling or the I mean the horizontal rod. All right, so we're going to so as you can see the tension T they are all in like at an angle and the ver the weight is vertical, which means that it is the vertical part of the tension that is actually supporting the weight. I repeat, it is the vertical part of the tension that is responsible in supporting the vertical weight. 
right? So the horizontal part is not the part that is supporting the weight. So how are we going to get the vertical part of the tension? We will split it up. So that's what we call resolving. So let's say we have tension T. Okay. So tension T is like this. And we know that it is at a certain angle. All right. So we, it is 25 degree from the horizontal. Okay. Now let's use the right angle triangle. To help you to see the components first. So as you get more familiar with it, we can actually do away with the right angle triangle. But right now we're going to use the right angle triangle to see what is the so the vertical component of the tension and the horizontal component of the tension. Okay, let's find out both. Um, but we know that we are actually more interested in the vertical component. Mm, right, so let's try this. Cosine 25 is equals to Tx divided by T. So using that, we know the x component of T is T cosine 25. So sine 25 will be equals to Ty divided by T. So the vertical component of T would be T sine 25. So I hope this makes sense to you. All right. Now, because we know that this system is at the equilibrium, because the weight is being supported by the tension, there will be no resultant force acting at this ring over here, or there's no resultant force acting on the weight itself because it's supported, it's at rest. So the sum of upward force will be equal to the sum of downward force. And of course, the sum of forces to the right will be equal to the sum of forces to the left. Alright, so let's try to let me use the color here. Right, so we're going to split the, we have already separated or resolved the force, uh, the tension. Let's put it over here. So the vertical part of the tension is T psi 25. Okay, now because there are two strings here and they are symmetrical, so they are equal. So therefore, this part is also T psi 25. The horizontal component would be T cosine 25. And this part is T cosine 25. All right. Now, because they are in equilibrium, so we know that the sum of upward forces must be equal to the sum of downward forces. So now that we actually split up the tension, so we can easily use the upward vertical forces and the downward vertical forces. So the upward forces would be T sine 25 plus T sine 25 equals to the weight, which is the downward force. Right. So if we solve this question, we know that T sine 25 is equals to 25 Newton and T is equal to 25 Newton divided by sine 25 and I will get a value of 59.2 Newton. Now of course we know that since it's equilibrium, the forces to the right will be equal to the forces to the left. Will be equal to the forces to the left. So which means I only have T cosine 25 to the right, one of them, and I also have T cosine 25 to the left. Well, I guess they are equal, right? It would make sense. So what I'm basically doing right here is that I'm summing the vertical part. So the first part is actually the vertical part of the forces. And after that, I'm looking at the horizontal 
So obviously, uh, to find the tension, we just need the vertical actually. So this shall be my answer. And I hope this is useful. So we are basically splitting up the tension into vertical and horizontal parts so that we can solve the question by calculation and we don't have to draw scale drawing. Well, if in, I hope this is uh, helpful and if you're not sure about the resolving of forces, always come back to the right angle triangle. Yeah. Thank you so much.